the rate of growth in terms of auctions in these markets uh, is, is phenomenal. Um, you know, if a year ago you're wondering how this was going to take off, you look at it now with volume sort of doubling um, inside six months, it really bodes well for the future of this industry. High Media is the biggest ad network, the biggest ad network in Europe. They're a public company based in France, about 500 employees, thousands of publishers all across, all across Europe. And today they announced that they're going to move their entire business to the AppNexus platform. And we are incredibly excited about this. Um, this is a huge moment. And the reason they're doing this is because they realize that they have the heft and the capability to be an exchange all of their own. And that makes them the seventh exchange that we now see on a global basis. So we have Google, we have Yahoo with Right Media, right? We have Orange, powered by OpenX. Um, we have Microsoft, powered by AppNexus, um, Technorati, Collective, and now High Media. You might have not heard much about us. We are not really used to advertising. We are very busy building advertising technology. The number one problem is that it's still too complex and too expensive for an agency or an advertiser to go spend money with a publisher. And this is why. There's too many manual processes, uh, too many hops and steps in the middle. Uh, this is a market where it's still uh, managed primarily by relationships and telephones and fax machines. And it's a very, very fragmented market. The second problem, <laughs> without naming names, <laughs> is that there's increased competition. And then another problem which I think gets more and more complicated as, uh, you know, the, the closer we get to Mozilla shutting down cookies, you need to track users in some way because otherwise this whole thing breaks down. You need to track them across devices, which would be a plus because more and more of them see the promotions on mobile devices. But actually even tracking them across the internet gets harder. That's an industry-wide problem. You need to solve that. Obviously it's still really a concern. There are a lot of large desktop players that are fearful to step into mobile. Uh, the challenge here is understanding, I suppose, in a world where consumers are still, you know, we talked about Mozilla earlier and third-party cookies being a challenge. Consumers aren't educated, really, about the cookie landscape. So as we, as an industry, if we're unable to understand these various probabilistic methodologies, being able to communicate this to uh, consumers is still a challenge. What's more, if you look at the performance advertisers, the guys spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in mobile marketing on a daily basis, the vast majority of the spend is still delivered across ad networks, typically 10 to 20 ad networks per plan. This is massively inefficient. It looks like digital 10, 12 years ago, and it's incredibly hard to scale. Conversion to ad tech and market, a lot of acquisitions in the space over the last five, 24 months. Um, you see Oracle and you know, Adobe and all these guys pushing the marketing cloud concept pretty hard. I mean, do you see convergence there, or do you see some kind of coming together of the two worlds? Um, will Adobe start buying companies like that next to get into the game, or is this a possibility? And what does that mean for the industry? Well, well first off, I think it's more likely, you know, that. Companies like Appnex can start buying other companies to get into that business okay. and vice versa. So I think I see us as much more of an acquirer than the acquirer in that conversation. In our view, uh, we see publishers as uh, old, venerable institutions. Some of them are 100, uh, 200 years old. Their roots is in newspaper business. Over those years, they built impressive, impressive structures to produce uh, extremely valuable, groundbreaking content. They pay dearly for this content, uh, both in terms of cost, like think about uh, having an office in Kabul these days, and actually sometimes even in blood, because journalists, as opposed to uh, at tech, tech vendors, are actually uh, being killed in doing their job. Five other options for that particular piece of kit, and I'll learn about those. No, we understand how online Additionally, it works. The, the sure. issue is that somebody is saying we don't want it. Not that we get it. We, we really understand how Which it works. Which is fine. They, no, they no, are no, able to no, say that they don't want it as long as if the publisher is becoming compensated. So whether or not they want it compensated... Gate. Simply do, put a gate. Don't sure. circumvent an ad blocker. No, no. You can, you can say it. Let's figure I'm, out how the Washington Post does. I will do both. We, I will do both. We don't need circum okay. circumvention technology if it's a simple choice. You want to give, do you want to give the consumer a choice or do you want to work for the publisher? Because right now, those two don't Roy, do, do you you're comfortable with what the Washington Post is doing? Is that what you're saying? I am neither comfortable or, or otherwise. It's not my business. <laughs> <laughs> Come on.
not, I'm, I, I, you know, it's not, you know, the, I'm, I'm the, not the Postman has done something really brave. They've said, if you're using an ad blocker, and that's, that's great. Fine. And that's it's a choice. Listen, we will choose not to serve you news. I think ultimately, you know, the way I, first of all, just so you understand, we at Shine, me personally, we're not against advertising. We are against abusive advertising, and we are most specifically. And who are you to make that choice? Pro consumer, no. No. <laughs> Me, Roy Carter, me, Shine. Regardless, so, choose. So, yeah, so the 27 employees of Shine and 200 million other folks, we've made the decision that it is abusive. It's very simple. No means no, Ben. I, I really don't understand what's unclear. <laughs> that, that's not your strongest <laughs> argument. <laughs> Roy. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> we don't extort. We also don't abuse consumers. That's not my issue. I'm from Shine. <laughs> Does... I think the person everyone is most relieved to see here today is Pippa. Round of applause for Pippa. A woman! Woo! Woo! This sector kills me. The B2B marketing hype in this sector, just I just chuckle because it's all based on perceived strategic value or uh, you know exits or, or valuation multiples. You recall years ago, everyone wanted to be a DSP. Oh boy, I'm a DSP. And then the same, very same freaking companies called themselves exchanges because that was the hot ticket term, right? Then all of a sudden it was, oh no, no, we're DMP, we're DMP, but we're really DMP. And now everyone's like, SaaS. Our SaaS business, I'm like, give me a break. Oh gosh, and have you seen it who made the slide? I know, and, and now they're skipping all over. It's like, <laughs> I'm going to go into that box, that box. That was my question. Did you, no, have, you sold, have you sold a DSP or a DMP? Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, eat your own dog food. No, um, no, this notion of SaaS, it's nonsense. First of all, you know, um, if you, anybody saying that they're a SaaS business, I'm like, really? So you're a SaaS business, so you're a subscription in an industry that has hundreds of billions of impressions per day. So the transaction volume in this industry is sky high and growing rapidly, and you want to take a fixed monthly, sub you're an idiot. I don't know if you have you, have you followed Terry Quadra. I'm sure you do. Terry's a bit of an icon in the, in the industry. He's a sad publicist and very good at it. But he's pictures of him getting on the plane to China, which is hilarious, you know. And uh, yesterday, Kawaja goes to China was uh, was trending on Twitter like uh, like Nixon go to China only Terry Kawaja can go to China, um, but the, the interesting part is like why are Chinese companies buying ad tech? Because I've heard similar stuff in, in in London as well. They are looking at yeah. companies. What's what's the rationale? But there? Uh, we we have a, we have people on the ground in China, so we don't need to tweet pictures of us flying to China. <laughs> Boom, lovely <dude. laughs> straight in. Yeah, that's why I like this woman. Don't mess the ride. I believe that there will be headers forever, there won't be many, and they'll be really fast, and faster than the answer ever was. So we'll see who's right. Publishers are, Competition is good, that one. Publishers are willing to, to put that script on that page, rather than um, if, if users want to read our content, uh, or they can just see a big, ugly BFG, right, or big BFA, big fucking ad, right? So if you don't want to see that, then you've got to deal with the, the computational costs of whatever the heck it is. I mean, if we don't do that, then you just allow Google to oversee the entirety of our inventory in the ad server. You have to just get a new ad server the worst way you want. There's not going to be yeah, any ad that's, server. Yeah. I mean, Google pretty no, much. No one's going to switch ad servers. That, that train has left the station. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. We've got to give it to Google here. Yeah, they, they won them. I keep witnessing conversations between uh, data science, uh, which is similar to the cat, and the business, which is Alice. Essentially, the, data, the, the, the business wants an answer to a very clear question whether they need to go left or right. Instead of uh, giving an unambiguous answer, uh, the data science involved in totally unneeded conversation, which you know, leads you to, to totally no good. The difference compared to the uh, Lewis Carroll story is that uh, business is actually paying to the data science. So at some point, they get really annoyed and they say, just go, I mean, you're a data scientist, go and figure out it from the data. No problem. I have the data, and uh, the data shows that you know people are killed by Internet Explorer, at least in the U.S. You know there is clear correlation. If you don't believe in that, fine. I have another data set that you know organic food sales. You know they do cause autism. So Mark, I'm going to come back to you, and I'm probably going to regret it. Because um, it's going to confuse the hell out of me again. Our goal is to be three times worse than TV. Like, so th this, I, the, the, the idea that RTV is commonly accepted as, as, as the way that we're going to transact, I think, is, is a fundamentally flawed idea. 
I don't really think it's the model so much as like the, the protocol is very different than the business model. I would agree with you. The business model of ad tech is ridiculous. Um, I think, you know, if we're looking at anything less than single-digit long-term tax, we're kidding ourselves. But I don't think you should be blaming the protocol. I wouldn't agree with that. Sure. I mean, the the protocol is that you inspect every unit of a good, right? Like that that just doesn't work. Like. There, the, name one other industry in the world where every single unit of a good is inspected by a buyer in order to make a buying decision. Well, I, I like to pick up my, my tomatoes and my fruit. So, like, I, I think at the end of the day, <laughs> that, that's like that's, this is, this is, you're a consumer in that, but, right? But like, like, no, 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 no that, that, that's, that's a good example. Knocking, a supermarket, a supermarket knocking, doesn't inspect every tomato that they buy. But you're knocking, you're knocking the fact that we've innovated to the point where we can do something you can't do in any other industry as being bad. I don't think that's a good way to look at it. No, I think I think so our, our, our TV, supplier does to a certain extent, though. I mean, the supplier does do that inspection. The tomatoes. Yeah. No, oh, they, no. There's like, a, there's like, just a common. I, well, I don't know. But I don't know what you do in the states, but in the UK, they have to be pretty uniform. There, no, this is what this is what happens. In, in, something, in, must, come, in, something must go on there. And then obviously we had that fantastic uh, debate about tomato trading there uh, previously, <laughs> about how, why tomatoes are important in media, and, and truly, the tomato was one of the greatest uh, metrics ever invented for media trading. When you talk about brand advertising, you really try to do it as art. And the strategy used to be relatively simple. Uh, you create the, the great ads, and then you get somebody to actually execute what you want from them. And uh, that somebody uh, uh, has, uh, was agency, it had a, a ton of control, uh, it earned uh, serious trust. Um, unfortunately, not dissimilar from how it happened in the movie, um, something went wrong, and a few years later in programmatic, uh, we're learning that, well, Maybe that was not a good idea to trust them after all. Uh, they've done some bad things. Just people on Earth in general are so tired of reading Exchange Wired and Ad Exchanger and being like, oh, fuck, big caching. Like, what does that mean? What do I have to do about that? We, we may and get onto like, that later. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one thing after another. And you start to think, like, well, screw that. I want to control the thing myself. And I think that leads people to potentially bad decisions of, like, that means I have to build it myself. In terms of where we are right now, uh, uh, <laughs> I love this room, by the way. I, no, no, normally, I'm I'm sitting in one of those chairs, waiting for this panel. Um, just for the record, I, I don't miss an ATS. Uh, in terms of where we are right now, obviously, you know, um, this is something that we built. We made some assumptions. Uh, it wasn't something that was ever uh, fully commercialized, so we deactivated it entirely. Uh, we're working on education. Uh, I'm leading uh, a lot of that as. You know, I'll just say the inventor, but really there, there's a team of, of people that have worked on this. It's not, I mean, I'm not, um, not the only person that's done it. And then it's something that's been around um, in, in the industry, particularly with publishers looking at ways that they can optimize uh, user experience. Uh, and my hope is, is that through that education and, and providing some additional controls uh, to DSPs uh, that we can bring the feature back for everybody. A very recent example, everybody is picking up on uh index for, for, for bit caching and yeah they probably have done something they shouldn't have done but, but realistically why do we pick up on them I mean there are probably a dozen odd variables which are passed in a bit I mean do you really know where they all come from like how they're computed how uh, how they're packaged are they 20 milliseconds late or are they just computed once a year and never, never actually change so you need to own all that and that's uh, that's what we tell kids how to grow up we need to use the same lessons ourselves it is genuinely an honour to have you here. I mean, in ten years of doing this, is uh, you're you're the main man in the I industry. I finally made it. You have actually good, you, you good. gravitated to the top, so it's a delight okay. to have you here. Good. So just just to start, do I call you Sir Marty? Can I call you what Sir, it, Sir Marty? Whatever no? you like. Okay, I'm going to call you Sir Marty. Uh, is that okay? No, that that is off. That is off the table. There's okay. One thing oh, that Sir annoys Martin. me. It's the American habit of shortening Martin to Marty. Okay. It really is irritating. Good. That's good to know because I, I'm not going to make that mistake later in the interview. Thank God. Jesus. Thank God. WPP is what? Market cap 12 billion. Oh, last, it, last year when I left it was 16 billion. Today it's 12 billion. <laughs> um, fact. 12. <laughs> so 12 billion. You know, you pop in a bid. A group M must be worth $15 billion. 
Chicken, chicken feed for Accenture. Accenture's capitalized at 125. So I, I, I throw that out because, to be mischievous, but also, <laughs> but also to point out that there are some things that could happen that I think will happen. Let's kick off on a positive note. Is our industry crumbling? <laughs> <laughs> Why, why are we drinking it? What time is it? It's Mexico week. Right, I don't advocate drinking, by the way. I'm a, I'm, I'm a teetotaler these days. <laughs> I need a drink after that Samardi panel. <laughs> well, cheers to 10 years oh, of thank you, Michael. ATS. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Michael. Yeah. Pleasure to have you here. Always great to be here. I this remember... Is- this is my 30th time appearing on stage <laughs> at ATS. I know, we've had you far too many times. I'm like Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes. I just keep... Just as funny as well, in fairness. You got the gags, don't worry. I I, I, I remember last year, right, I met Michael um, at uh, Cannes. Was it Cannes? Yes, Cannes. And I, and I heard about the AT&T acquisition, and I chased him around the rooms. You get involved by AT&T, and Mike was kind of hiding in the corner, trying not to talk to me. Please, go away, go away, go away. <laughs> and sure enough, a couple of weeks later, you were bought with him. So um, it was like the one thing I got right in 10 years of all my predictions, which are shite, my predictions. Oh, I love your predictions. They're your terrible. predictions. Well, they're really entertaining. Okay. I, I can't I can't vouch for the fact that they're right. You know, I hate the question, should we in-house or not? I think it's just so basic. It is basic, I, so I yeah, thought Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it, Kieran. I'm going to tell you that. I, I, and I, I was led astray by Sir Martin. He bullied me this morning. So and you know. I, I don't <laughs> like it because I think it fundamentally derails the attention from what truly matters, which is we are under a fundamental um, era of transformation in business. If we do the bare minimum, if we check that box and that's all we're doing, then we're going to end up in a scenario where we will be um, we'll be scrutinized and we'll be, we'll be sort of held accountable by people who, who probably don't really understand this as well. Do you guys actually think people care? Wait. No. Right? Like most don't. I, I'm right. Like it, we're though. making this huge deal. No, some some senators and, and right. MPs care. Because they don't understand because it didn't exist earlier and we're like we're making this whole big deal for a, a very small portion of the population. No. No. We have to regulate this, but by the way, can we put some facial recognition at the airport? I mean, Exactly. There you go. Okay, well, I think actually... Solved. Uh, Sorted. <laughs> actually, earlier on, during the ICO session, the ICO said they they conducted a panel of uh, 2,000 normal people, as we, as we said. and Between the ages of? Uh, he didn't quite say that. but uh, And how was it worded? I think it was 63% said they were fine with targeted advertising, but I think when they went through the whole RTB protocols, that number halved. Uh, when they actually explained it further, I believe that was a general gist of what he said. So that's just a little bit of my, uh, you know, the number of you. the number of consumers that are okay with how food prep happens gets halved when they understand the actual <laughs> process. <Okay. laughs> All right. All right, did I come up with an idea there last week called the shit web? Did you hear about this? I have not heard about it. It's really really cool, actually. <laughs> so the idea is that you'd face the anybody coming to Safari, right? Uh, You just forced them into a shitty version of the web from 1988, right? With about 70 different contextual ads, pop-up ads, and actually crap UI. And then there's a link at the back saying, if you want an uh, upgrade, please please consent. Yeah. And said, we can't afford to keep the lights on. You freeload them. (laughs) Given the, you know, pressure on third-party cookie, how do you think audio is uniquely placed in this space to be able to bring, like, what kind of data can you bring to bear? And how is it different to, like, your display? Because obviously a lot of the audio stuff is consumed on a mobile device, so it's a different dynamic. So at the moment we're kind of watching to see what Apple's going to do. Is IDFA going to be completely got rid of? Are they going to bow down to Mozilla's request to, you know, sort of churn it um, every single month? But equally, I think we can't get away from the fact that, or we shouldn't get away from the fact that audio is a highly contextual environment 
and a lot of the publishers are already, if you think, look at the streaming companies such as Deezer and Spotify, I mean, they are already sort of putting together um, information to be able to pass that across to allow you to target in, in, in a cookie-less environment. And um, I was very, very, very impressed to hear how in-app is not safe but Facebook is, irrespective of like all that. the scandals that we had over the past two years. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> Um, over the past year or so, ITV has, you know, following um, our CEO, Carolyn McCall's uh, strategic refresh last year, and she talked a lot about investment in data and technology, um, specifically kind of in, in the advertising space, we've been um, investing on in our technology stack on two fronts. So obviously, you've all heard about the um, exclusive partnership that we've done with Amobi in UK and Ireland, and, and we're in the process of building um, our programmatic platform for addressable TV, um, will be, which will be launched soon. Um, and then the second element, which is probably the element that I'm a little bit closer to, is we have been rebuilding our customer data platform in-house um, and building the teams around that, the data engineering capability, the data science capability um, around that so that we are, you know, I think for the first time bringing our you know, first party uh, viewer data, so our logged in user data, um, viewing data, uh, advertising data, and, and data across all of our interactive platforms in one place. The window of opportunity is in good faith from us open for engagement. Come and explain to us the sorts of challenges that you're facing. Come together through bodies so that we can understand how you as an ecosystem, whether it's publishers, advertisers, or, or platform providers in the middle, um, are facing the challenges that you're facing and your plans to transform through that. But equally, it, I'd, it, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that at the end of that six month window, if we don't see meaningful change, then we'll have to consider, do we leverage our enforcement uh, powers? We don't really want to go there. You know, certainly in terms of programmatic delivery, I wouldn't in good conscience be able to recommend to an advertiser today that they spend money against a Safari audience without very significant modifications or hacks being put in place. So yes, you might be able to set up some customized deal ID type setups with publishers where you can effectively delegate the frequency capping to the publisher, creating private marketplaces to manage frequency, but it's really inelegant and it's extremely operationally expensive. And elegant and becoming it. less and less possible with each passing day as Apple releases each new version of ITP. And it's site specific, right? It's not yeah, across the, pl the plan. So it's like, yeah, yeah it's if uh, yeah. the minute you have two sites on your on your media plan, which you, know, you have hopefully often, yeah. it doesn't yeah. work. Anymore. What I've told you guys to correct me wrong is that at home, kind of um, everybody in at home will know this is that in order to deliver that BA campaign, there was a man with a laptop plugged into the screen, waiting for the plane, press, and press it. Brilliant. So, and then you've got someone taking a picture for drama campaign, right? That's the point. So, personalization is unbelievable, but <laughs> I'm agreeing. Nick you're lying. That's such a lie. Is it not true? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really. shit. Yeah. Bit, no, I'm having to cut bullshit out when I hear it. That's <laughs> I mean, on that note, we'll never know. Well, I want to find out if it's a lie or if it's true or not. But uh, I want to say thank you very much to Nick. You, you, we, we're done, Sean. No, we had to go. We, we should have made it that 45 minutes. I know, you're right. It was, too, it was too short. I'm really sorry. There is potentially far more to come from Chrome with time. We have no idea what the plan is beyond the fairly innocuous declare your intent, uh, which is all they've done so, so far. So you'd, you'd rather not be dependent on Google effectively for as the gatekeeper for our entire industry because it does feel like we're kind of hanging on there really, aren't we? Like, Google really could flick the switch, but I don't think they will. I don't think they will. I, I, I don't think they'll do anything unless they're pressured to, but what I'm saying is if they are pressured to, I don't think they'll take the Apple tact. I think they'll make it a consumer control. I think they might be forced to sell Chrome, actually. Who's going to buy it? I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it. We can always use third-party cookies forever.